Well, hi everybody. This is Jim Starkweather, and uh, welcome to another crack. No, this isn't cracking the box. This is a Monday morning. No, this isn't a Monday morning. This is a Tuesday mail call. Yes, I would have had the uh, the video out yesterday, but uh, I got a notification in that I got something, and I went to the, my mailbox and picked that thing up, and then. Not only, I'm not, I didn't get back to my office and 10 minutes later I got another notification saying I got something. So yeah. So I was like, ah. And the good thing probably that I waited till today too because that something is from Tamiya USA and we know that Tamiya USA sends really nice stuff. Which I will be the first thing I will open. Uh, we also got something from Plus Model. We got something from Stevens International and I believe we got a Osprey or something to that effect. Um, I'd like to start off and apologize to all my, my fervent or even semi-interested uh, viewers out there that, uh, yeah, I haven't been too good with the videos lately. I've been, um, I've, been, I've been a bit of a procrastinator, I have to admit. I, I've been putting this off to do that and so forth and so on. So I do hope to get caught up soon. Otherwise, I'm going to get buried in models. I mean, we're not doing too bad, but I have a backlog of things that we've kind of not placed with people and we want to just get those things done in some one way or the other kind of scenario. For instance, the Tiger 1 initial from Dragon that you guys voted on the straw poll. That's sitting over there. And the T-10 the T Soviet tank and the uh, Panzer Kampfwagen 4 with Mitt uh, Panther turret. Um, anyways, and a lot of books. A lot of books that I haven't dealt with. Um, and I did get an email from uh, the kind people at Ammo by Mig reminding me that I still have many paint sets that I need to try to find homes for as well. And uh, I'll go over those at the end of the video. So if you're interested in paint sets or something, stay tuned and I will do a little bit of a, a kind of a impromptu kind of plug for the paint sets we have. But we do have this new item from Tamiya. Let's see what this, what's what this puppy is. I have a feeling it could be the, uh, the SU-76. Isn't that the one we're kind of all waiting for? Um, we got in the Oh, no, we did get the SU-76. What am I saying? Not the SU-76, the... Yes, this one. The AMX-13 by Tamiya. So Tacom just released three kits of this model, and now Tamiya has uh, probably was on the bandwagon first, and, and Tacom quickly kind of outdid them. But, uh, but yeah, Tamiya obviously working on a brand new tooling. This is a never-before-released kit from them, and actually, I think... Uh, Tacom might have beaten everybody else to the punch in terms of the first ever release. So we will be very interested in doing uh, obviously the unboxing and passing this over to someone for a thorough build project slash build review blog, something like that. Um, but yeah, and I still have the AMX 13 uh, series uh, Tacom kit here. I probably won't do a direct comparison because I don't really like to do that. It's sometimes unfair. But um, yeah, I mean, just, just be briefly peeking at it myself. It looks very very similar, obviously, but uh, but different because it's a different manufacturer. So um, yeah, we'll t we'll definitely check that out and be very uh, interested in seeing what what that one's like. What's gone on weekly, or what's gone on in the last week or two? Actually, it's been two weeks, right, since we did one last. Well, I had a comment in the comments section, which I actually did delete, uh, and hopefully this person's watching. But I, I doubt they will be. Uh, you know, I get a lot of these comments from these random people who find my videos. It was, this was on the Fat Boy uh, Low mo motorcycle we did years ago, and uh, left a, a rather nasty comment claiming that I wasn't an expert on the, you know, on the motorcycle. How dare I do a review on something where I was not really fully uh, versed in all the motorcycle, you know, blah 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 blah. <laughs> some people, I don't think some people realize. A, who I am, and B, you know, that, uh, yeah, I'm doing a video re unboxing or whatever on a model kit, not, not you know, doing a critique on a St. James Bible or, or, you know, like doing something on something that you would never expect anybody to, um, you know, critiquing the current state of affairs between political nations like the, the Russia and the United States or whatever, although I'm probably fairly well versed to do that, but, um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, he called me a geezer in that comment, which I thought was just a lot. I, I started to respond to it, and then I was like, you know what? You're the kind of comments I don't like to see on YouTube, and, it, and to leave, I, was, I wanted to leave his comment up and respond to it, because I think that's also a, a valid thing, but, it's, but at the same time, I don't want people to just get away with those comments, because it's kind of cyberbullying, you know, to, to just go to random channels and leave nasty comments that really aren't even, you know, not in any way constructive or, or valid in terms of, you know... 
not to hurt the whole free speech argument. I just think it, does, it doesn't make any sense to tool out cyber, cyber bullying online, whether you're a big channel, a small channel, whatever. And of course, the big channels do have to deal with all that stuff, but I'm not a big channel. I know that. That said, I am a big website. In scale modeling, there aren't too many other bigger websites than ours, so I, that's why I'm not really hurt by a lot of these comments, because it's kind of like, yeah, well, that's nice, but <clears throat> yeah, I'm still going to keep doing things the way I do them, and I don't really care what you think. <laughs> and that goes for all the, whatever, three of you now watching this that think that, oh my god, he's going to do more th stuff where he's like not an expert, and I'm going to just like this. Go ahead, I don't care. <laughs> I'm doing this because I need to, because it's like I'm getting sent these pr products for samples and so forth, and we have to do something with them, and I have to get the communicate out there to people that we have them and so forth. It's a responsibility, not an ego thing. If I was doing this as an ego thing, I'd do them a lot differently, for one thing. What is with all this stuff? Look at this strange packing material I've got with this plus model thing. It's like, I thought I'd maybe pull a few of these off, but I, then I realized there's tons of them. All right. So, uh, let me just get a couple of those out of the way, or some of them out of the way. All right, so we've got a lot of things here from Plus Model. We've got uh, 1 35th scale tufts of grass, green. Let's see if I can get the camera in there and focusing. They do look kind of, you know, they do have different shades there and different, different styles. Well, you know, they're kind of the same. But it uh, looks like they all have like a little sticky patch on the bottom. That you can just apply them. That looks very cool. Uh, we got the... Um, Road Barriers, EL066, Road Barrier 135th scale, and it's going to make one of, basically, you know, like a typical Hogan's Hero style, you know, don't go through here kind of thing. Um, another Tufts of Grass, there must be a bunch of these. Uh, this one, obviously, slightly less hydrated, so it's more of a less green green. Um, then we have, uh, what are they calling these? Because they're instruction, Tufts of Reed Green. And tufts of reed dry. Some of those came unattached from their little their little spots, but I think they'll probably be okay. U.S. wooden crates for condensed milk, World War II. Actually, it's too big for the package, and it obscures some of the label. So I uh, think that's going to build into little, the little you know milk crates. Uh, a, a bigger uh, one thirty-fifth scale shed. Probably in laser cut parts, I would imagine. Let me just take a peek and look. We're taking a peek. This doesn't count as cracking the box, though. Yeah, it's all laser cut wood. Very nice. Thing. Um, and we got plastic cans, uh, one thirty-fifth scale. Yeah, these are all one thirty-fifth. I think the uh, tufts of grass. Yeah. And 148 scale, multi-car M22. Looks maybe Eastern European, I'm guessing. I suppose it could be British, but no, it looks Eastern European. Um, or European, I should say. So, um, there's no more East and West, right? No, seriously, don't get into a political thing on, on the channel. <laughs> um, all right, so that's, uh, that's everything from uh, Plus Model. Let me just quickly scan this in case there's any relevant, important stuff on here. Probably just the standard. Yep. Okay. All right, and lastly, well, actually not lastly, but uh, next we have whatever's come in to us from Stevens International, which is the distributor of many kits of different kinds in the United States. And we have newspapers with some comic strips. I was, it's funny, when I look at comic strips today, it's like, I don't even recognize any of these. Isn't that sad? You know, when you're a kid, you know, we have all these comic strips that you grow. I mean, okay, BC, I recognize BC. Um, BC, <laughs> I recognize BC, that's pretty pathetic. Dilbert, okay, I recognize Dilbert, even though I never really read Dilbert too much. Shoe, okay. The Born Loser, okay, I recognize that. Some of this, this, this side has the classics on it, I guess. <laughs> what we can call those the classics. But uh, um, yeah, all these other ones I do not recognize. They're just all like new. I get it, you know, all the guys that were writing comic strips when I was younger, even in my 20s or whatever, were, they're all retired now. So, or died like Charles Schultz. 
That was really sad, Charles Schultz passing. I felt like that was just unfair. He should have been allowed to live forever. Um, all right, so we have uh, actually from a new uh, vendor, apparently, RS Models, or a new uh, manufacturer. 172nd scale Curtis Hawk 2. I have a feeling Rowan may be asking for this one, or at least in interested in it. Um, but uh, potentially he's already, may have already even gotten it. Um, and <laughs> we have the Soviet MTLB. Now what's interesting, uh, actually, I think I just saw a very similar vehicle to this in Armored Warfare yesterday. It was a Polish tank that had a turret on the top, but it was definitely this style uh, configuration. So I'm not really familiar with this at all. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a cracking the box on this, otherwise I'll probably just pass it over to one of our competent uh, Russian slash Soviet reviewers. Probably still pass it on after that, but if I did the cracking the box. All right, and then from Osprey, we got in the Valentine Infantry Tank, 19, 1938 to 1945. And this is by Bruce Oliver Newsom, PhD, illustrated by H. Mooreshead. All right, well, that, that covers it in terms of uh, what we just got. Out. The magic of editing. We are now inserting ourselves in this little scene because guess what? Yeah, while I was getting this video ready to put up, I get another email saying there's another box there at the shipping. So I went, went home for lunch and I picked it up. It's from MRC. Let's quickly take a look at it. So I will still follow up at the end of this video with all the stuff I said I would follow up with and then, you know, go on this long diatribe about something. But anyways, uh, you can just stay, stay for that if you'd like. Or you can just watch this and, and I, think, uh, I think we'll be at the end. So, all right. They sent us bubble wrap. Much bubble wrap. Oh look, it's like a, it's like a, what do you call those things? You know, they, like a little frock, like bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah. All right, looks like we got uh, two aircraft. We got a 148th scale F8, F1 slash 2, right there, I think. Uh, USS, USS Tarawa. So, I'm not sure that's a re-release from Academy or a new kit, but, um, it's mm, similar to another kit we got. Uh, well, actually, that was 172nd scale, I think. Hold on, we look. Uh, yeah, thinking of the uh, that one. All right, and then we also got the F-15C MSIP-2 California ANG 144th Fighter Wing. I wonder if those are guys are near us. We have a we have a uh, Air Force. Reserve base near us in Fresno. So, uh, ANG, California ANG. Uh, Anaheim something something? I don't I have no idea what ANG is. But uh, this is a special edition with limited availability. Um, 172nd scale. And, um, yeah, so we got that as well. So, thus endeth the insertion. So, um, again, um, if you're interested in any of these samples, just in my quick little the pitch for, for contributors here, we do have spreadsheets uh, on each of our websites. Uh, so in this case, it's mostly going to be Armor ML, although this would be on Aer Aeroscale. Um, and those, you can find links on the homepage, or you can click the, uh, the um, link where we basically where you can find the link underneath in the review section that says available samples or want to publish a review there's actually if you publish the, if you click on the, now because i just fixed this if you click on the uh want to publish a review link which is kind of in the middle of the page it's in this little area where we have all our reviews listed um it'll take you to a page now that has all the spreadsheets potentially linked or if you could, actually if you're on kitmaker i'm sorry if you're on kitmaker It'll show you all the spreadsheets, so you can just do it right from the Kitmaker site. Because a lot of you guys on YouTube, if you find this video on YouTube and do it, um, will probably go to Kitmaker and not go to one of our sites. Which you, so you weren't finding the spreadsheet link because Kitmaker at this, up until just uh, a week or so, a week or so ago didn't have the link, but now it does. So um, that said, again, we uh, accept requests from anybody uh, if you want to do a, like, say, a kit like the the Soviet MTLB. Uh, we'd probably want to see something from you, either to the effect of an online something you've published, some, some indication of, yes, I can shoot photos, yes, I can write decent English text and so forth, because otherwise we're probably not going to just take a gamble on somebody who's never done an online review before. Um, so in that case, if you're still interested, 
though. Uh, you can always send in a review of one of your own kits or something you've purchased recently. Um, you know, we do, we do lots of reviews on older kits. They're still very popular. Um, all right, so about, I talked about doing the, uh, the quick little plug for the MIG uh, paint sets. Let me just grab those. Um, make sure I'm getting most of them. Yep. I have many of these, actually. Stepping on my microphone cable. Um, they were the Argentine Colors Volume 1. And again, uh, oops, those come in the small uh, little four, four paint sets. Uh, U.S. Navy World War II colors. And what we'd want with these is basically some kind of project build, uh, something or something where you've used them. Uh, not necessarily a review. It wouldn't even have to be a review per se. It could just be a project build and showing off that you use these, this color set. Uh, but if you wanted to do a, 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 like a use review, that's fine. Space Fighters, again, not sure this would work for all things. They kind of be show, seem to be trying to show a, a Star Wars-esque fighter on here, but uh, it could be probably used for anything. Uh, lots of grays, dark grays, blacks, white, and so forth. Uh, U.S. Air Force TAC colors, 60s and 70s was the other set that we had. So, um, dun, 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 yeah. Um, and, uh, and I have lots of other sets, too. I also, also have these small uh, metal, the MIG, uh, ML by MIG metal payment, pigments. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, these are acrylic color p um, paint sets or paint individual in items. So it, again, those kind of be project dependent. We also have the splashes of color thing that they came out with. Uh, like this is loose ground. Uh, and this one's dry earth. But if you wanted to do some kind of project and feature those, that's what we're looking for with those. Really kind of hard to find always somebody who's, oh yeah, I can do this. So I, I, I get it. You know, we, I think we probably covered these in a previous video. But uh, they're still here. Uh, we don't have them listed on the sheets uh, because it would be kind of the sheets would get really long with all these small uh, individual items. Sometimes we don't list, for instance, all the plus model items because A, I'll probably do uh, some kind of um, mass coverage thing on these uh, or uh, we'll send out the ones that are obviously the bigger the bigger items and so forth. So I wish we could review, I mean, this is to, I'm saying this to the manufacturers and vendors who might be watching our videos, but I wish we could review everything we get. But unfortunately, this isn't everything we get. <laughs> we get like, you know, more items sent to individuals who, you know, ver run the various different sites. And this is just the items coming in directly to me. So, uh, yeah, we, we deal with a lot of review items annually. And we try to give them some level of coverage like this video. But, uh, you know, it's not like we can come up with a, a reviewer writer, writer for everyone. And I wish I was like five people. I could just clone myself. And also I could maybe hire people. But, uh, yeah, I don't quite make that kind of money running the site. You know, it's enough for me and my wife and so forth to... So to, to keep my child fed and housed and clothed. So it is a professional job. I mean, if any of you have been wondering, uh, I, thought, I think I've made that kind of clear in previous videos, but uh, yeah, it is, it is my a job. Uh, that and taking care of the site and making sure it stays running and so forth, which I'm going to try to focus on more because it's become more about these samples lately than it has about, uh, about anything else. So uh, that's all said. Uh, I'd like to thank all the people who have sent us uh, Samples and uh, to me USA, Stevens, uh, Osprey, and Plus Model, of course. And we uh, we will try to do as best we can with these. I'm sure you will see something up on the AMX 13. Why? Well, because it's a brand new kit. It hasn't even been released. It's like two months, maybe, or a month before you'll even see it on shelves. So that's the other thing. The other plug. If again, if any manufacturers, vendors are watching this, yes, I take care of these kits more because they're like an exclusive. Um, it's I'm obviously I'm not criticizing anybody like Plus Model because they, they get their stuff to us as soon as they can. But uh, there are vendors and manufacturers we've had before, like in the past, Dragon had sent us things, airmail from Hong Kong and so forth. And we covered those items very ferociously, but that was because they were not available yet to see anywhere else. So, yeah, we were going to cover things that we get uh, in advance of, say, you know, the same way they send products to essentially the magazines. They send the magazines things airmail. Uh, whereas they send everything else surface uh, mail, so that's that's kind of the difference. Anyway, just little little uh, little insider information there. If you're thinking of starting up a scale modeling website slash publishing business. All right, well, thanks for watching. A little uh, weird thing there at the end, but uh, we appreciate uh, any upvotes or any uh, likes. Uh, don't leave any rude comments. Uh, try not to leave any really really rude comments like the, uh, the gentleman in our early for aforementioned video. And we will see you next time on Mail Call.